uh, do another quick exercise. Uh, in this one, I want to focus on having a high resolution sky in the background. And I'm not going to create that sky myself. In this case, I'm going to go to Pexels and find some free images. But before we do that, we need some landscape uh, terrain. So uh, let's do something also at a slightly different aspect ratio, maybe more like 1366 by 768. There you go. And uh, one technique I like a lot is to initially start with a basic uh, gradient, in particular a, a circular gradient, that will dictate uh, sort of where the, the river is going to go through. So if I do it like this, I'll have the bright areas, mostly high peaks, the dark areas down deep valley, but in between there, actually there'll be uh, higher elevations again, but then there will be also some, some carved uh, river here. Uh, and that's if we go to render plasma noise and we don't leave it in the default mode which is opaque replacing everything instead we go to the very bottom here with the difference mode and then we perhaps increase the scale a little bit and you can tell it's doing a little bit of a, a curve scenario here and every time you click it it'll try again that's a nice one but uh, we may also want to make it seamless try again okay so let's use this one here and store that and then what we do is um, perhaps increase or expand the dynamic range and of course um, also perhaps add a little bit of erosion and sediments so what we'll do here is with 3d designer um, go in expand a little bit more and um, just for the preview here bring it up a little bit uh, add a little bit of pre-filter smoothing and then most importantly add some erosion. Now you may want more erosion and what you can do is increase the amount of rainfall, maybe 77, uh, but also decrease the flatness threshold so there are more points where it can start the erosion. Uh, maybe 44, maybe 34 or 24, let's see what that looks like. Whoa, that's a little bit too much. Let's give it 34. There you go. Uh, and then uh, we can add a little bit of sediment. So you can see that riverbed again. And then also add some cre uh, uh, create some texture here, some coloring. Uh, and if you really want a deep winter feel, you can add some uh, snow to the sediments. And then that way some, some of the valleys will be filled with more snow as well. Uh, you might make the snow a little bit more bluish if for example there will be a bluish sky in the scene where you render that it might make sense to have a little bit more of a bluish tint uh, so you can already prepare for that if you want to uh, there's a lot more we can do on the terrain itself but we, we're not going to spend too much time on this tutorial so let's go simply store the height map the color map is already in the back end we can on the back buffer or the swap buffer but we can store that as well so we have that here and you know maybe we'll need the erosion for some extra widening of the riverbeds uh, there's a couple of other reasons why we might want that so uh, let's go load that um, eroded version of the elevation map and in fact i'm going to add a little bit more to that so i'm going to do a combine subtracting now that's way too much so let's go here and do the interactive undo just a little bit more there you go. And then we can switch to the swap image, the swap buffer, where we can also darken the same thing uh, using that erosion map. Uh, do again combine subtract and that will allow us to to add a little bit more coloring, especially in those areas where there might be some darkening or deepening of uh, the based on the erosion, have some elevation map changes. We might also have some color changes. For example, you know, wherever the rivers, the creeks and the gullies are, you might see some dust accumulate, you might see some rocks, and that gives you a slightly different uh, tone or coloring. So let's store that. Let's go back to the main image and store that one. So we have the main and the swap image. Both of these I would save, uh, you know, from the file menu. Let's skip that for now. Uh, what we want to do is uh, create a background sky. So let's first switch to the web browser and go to Pexels. All right, so here we go, pexels.com or .org actually. I guess there is some commercial aspect to it and then there is some royalty-free aspect. Great collection of free videos. Um, what I'm going to do is simply look for skies 
and um, what we're looking for are skies that are impressive but also with a lot of fine detail so that when we keep them in high resolution it will it, it should show that detail uh, it's also good if if the picture where you see them is kind of in a similar orientation this one actually is interesting if you don't if you ignore the top part and really only want this part here Although we might grab the top part because our scene will want to keep much of this without distorting it vertically. So that could be an interesting candidate. Um, let's see if we see anything else that's even more delightful to use or impressive. There are definitely some good skies in landscape renderings. You know what? Let's... Uh, Let's just uh, let's try this one. Let's see what that does. Uh, what's the highest resolution? Oh, there's others actually showing similars, I guess. What I'm going to do is see what the highest resolution is. So this one is from Stacy Gabrielle. Thank you, Stacy. Um, free download. Let's see if it gives you. Yeah, highest resolution original is okay. So that's a good start. It's not the super high resolution that I was hoping for, but what we'll do. Um, download is done. What we'll do is we'll we'll open this picture. So I'm gonna copy that. I got it in Airfront View here. Let's go back to Dog Waffle, and I'm gonna store it here, creating a, a new image. And so there it is. Now, one thing I'd like to do is get rid of the bottom half. So I'll simply select it and crop it out. Uh, select this part. Actually, I, I'll, I'll select the part I want to keep. Right, something like uh, maybe about this much. Right. So then I'll go to image and crop to selection. Okay, it's still a very high resolution image. The next thing I need to do is duplicate it so that I can uh, have it twice as large. I need, I, I want this vertical uh, detail, but I want to have it bigger horizontally. So before I do that, before I tile it, I need to make it seamless. So I'm going to do that here. In fact, before that, of course, I want to, oops, uh, let's undo that selection. Um, before I do anything else, I'm going to store that. There you go. We got a stored copy. Let's go and uh, make it seamless right there. And you might have a need to do more overlap on the horizontal and next to nothing or very little on the vertical. If you're not going to turn the camera up to the pole, to the, you know, the, the place right above you, you don't care whether it has a, an odd point there. You don't need that. And at the bottom, at the horizon, you won't see it anyway because there's some some mountain range hiding it. So you could you could do with very little vertical, but perhaps a little bit more on the horizontal overlap. Right. So let's see. Let's do that and uh, store this one. And so now what we have, we need to see what the dimensions are. Info. It's a uh, two seven. Let's turn it into a number that's a little bit easier to work with, like 2800 by 2500, something like that. 28 by 25. So I'm going to resample it to 2800 by 2500. And, you know, to be strict, we should actually lock the aspect ratio, but frankly, it doesn't matter. Uh, at that level, if it's just a few pixels off, we're not going to notice. Um, so then what we'll do is we'll take that image um, as a brush, so I'm going to use copy this as a, as a brush. So I now have this in the brush. It's a big brush. If I go to my brush tools and show it, so showing this image in the brush, it's big, but it's actually small because I have a small size here. If I reduce it back to the maximum, here is the original size. Right? Um, I'm going to store that just so we visualize it. Not that we really need to, but it's 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 okay to have a stored copy here. So I'm going to say store and manage a copy of it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to want to make the canvas now. Oh, let me turn the preview off here. We're going to make the canvas twice as light, uh, as wide. Uh, so we're going to, we, we could clean it if, if you want to clear it. doesn't matter really. Uh, but we'll, what we'll do is we'll go to, not resample it, but image size. And there you could say, I got my original here on this side, and I want to scale it to the right. So... The height is staying the same, but the width, we're going to say maybe 5,800, right? Uh, 5,600, something like that. That's double 2 times 800. So we now get it twice as wide. And at that point, how do we stamp it down? If I take this as a brush image and preview it and make sure I'm in stamp mode, 
I could simply go here and approximately place it where I want, stamp it down, hoping to get it the second time I have the keyboard focus or the mouse focus. And uh, with the, since I made it seamless, it should be really hard to see any sort of transition, but it might also be hard to get it right. So an easier way to do that is to actually simply use the fill tool. Because if you look at the fill tool, there, is, there are some settings here and it's using the brush. Right, this this brush image that I have stored here, well, it's also my current brush image. So if I click it, I see a preview here. It's super big. It doesn't even fit in this preview, uh, but that's okay. What I can do, though, is simply say I want that pattern to be filled and to simply do a pattern fill that replicates it across here. So I don't need to pick another one of those sample textures. I use my current image. And uh, all I got to do here is pattern fill. And then you have this command uh, shortcut Q. If you look under uh, fill and feature replacement, there it is. There's a keyboard shortcut Q. So I'm going to just use that uh, Q. Uh, maybe I need the keyboard focus first. A safe place to get keyboard focus or uh, is to perhaps to click down here. Uh, or if you have the, the, uh, the sidebar enabled, click on here. That should get you the keyboard focus. And then you click Q and it tiles that brush image from the upper left several times to the right and then also down if it's small enough to fit. Well, here it doesn't. It fits it exactly once and you have a perfect replication of that entire sky. So it's a good way to tile it. And you could do that. You could do it three times that way. You could make it even wider. Um, so that's, that's a technique I wanted to show. The next thing I want to do, of course, is store this image, but it will keep this as the new brush. I can free some memory by getting rid of this one. And now this is my new image. This is my new brush image. I may want to make this one uh, seamless as well. So just to be safe, I'm going to do, uh, excuse me, not, not resample. Well, you could resample too if necessary, if it doesn't have the proper aspect ratio or, or dimensioning. I think you need about two and a half times uh, wider than high. I'm not exactly that, but you know, this is just to get an idea. It doesn't have to be totally precise. Uh, so I'm going to go and make it seamless once more. Uh, again, this time on the vertical, I don't need so much, but on the horizontal, I want some. Maybe I want a lot of that. Anyway, let's do that. Uh, something like this. And that's the image I'm going to store. That's, in fact, the image I'm going to grab as a, um, as a brush. And since we already stored it, we could do that from the stored copy here. Right? This use as brush. Uh, then you could also store it as a brush, but you don't have to. Um, you could certainly go here and say store, uh, you know, store and manage, but you don't have to, as long as it's not going to change, as long as you don't change that brush image, it is the image that's going to be used as the sky in Puppy Ray. So it's time now to free this uh, image, in fact, to restore the elevation map. Now that one was much smaller, as you can see here, so I'm going to need to um, go here to the little pull down and say uh, creating new document. So here's my elevation map. Let's switch over here and also load that uh, terrain, that uh, coloring again. And there we go. So now we have both of these together. Now it's time to go with Puppy Ray. So we go to transform Puppy Ray. And by default, it's using one of the built in uh, default uh, skies. Uh, and in order to switch to our sky, what you do is you go here and you see the presets, but there's one more down here. That's our brush, right? You click that and you do a little refresh. And so now you have that sky and you, you notice there's a little polar activity here. That's okay. Uh, the sky we got is not super, super perfect because there's actually a lot of it down here that we don't see. It's actually, perhaps it's more the fog. Let me get the fog out a little bit. Um, that's to some extent uh, the culprit. You could perhaps reduce a little bit here. Uh, that might help. Uh, there's perhaps let's see what happens if we make it a white color fog. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have to adjust a little bit here. Um, it's it's uh, unfortunate we can't completely get rid of the fog, um, or, or or like push it down to a point where it's only very minimal. Uh, that, that certainly would be interesting, except maybe, let me try something here. There's also another option for fog. If you click more, we can see uh, the ground fog. Yeah, no, that's more like a hovering vertical ground fog. But, but anyway, we, we get the sky, and that's what we really ultimately wanted to, to, 
to achieve. Um, let's see one more thing. Maybe we have... Um, yeah, the sky is still too much horizontally torn. It's not the right aspect ratio. I think we would need to make it even three and a half or three times as wide. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to load that original sky here one more time. Uh, where was it? This one? Yeah. Because um, this one already had it twice in there. So I'm going to say this one here. Let's go replace the document. And um, we're going to load this as the brush. Copy this as the brush. And we can clear the selection on this. I don't know that we absolutely need it, but it certainly helps. Here's the brush. Let's not see it in the preview. Let's go make the canvas three times wider now. So we have uh, image size. So, oh, that's actually the very original. That was not the, the nice dimensions. Well, let's just give it approximate here. If it's going to be three times, this is roughly 3,000. Three times 3,000, 9,000 minus a little bit. Let's make it 8,500. You know, it's, it's not rocket science. We don't have to be exactly there spot on. The height will keep the same or maybe we'll make it 2,400. Uh, what is 3 times 24? 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times, that's another 12. So 72. Is that it? Yeah, 7200. That that will make it roughly, um, and maybe I'm wrong here on the math, <laughs> but uh, that should be fine. So now I use Q and that tiles it across. And yeah, it's 2.5 times. I guess I needed more. Um, let's go set the image size a little bit wider. Uh, image size. Okay, if it's not 7200, maybe I was closer with uh, 9000. Let's do 9000. Oops, sorry, not 90,000. Something like this. And now we go Q for fill and tile, still with the fill settings. And there you go. That's that's roughly it. It's actually a little bit more now. You see that there will be a gap visible here. So maybe it is time to do another make seamless. And uh, that's really what we use that for. There you go. And store this one. All right. So we got a new one here. Now we can restore the original elevation map once more, uh, creating a new document and store the elevation the color map or the height the uh, color texture map and there we go so now back to uh, wait i didn't did i put this into the brush i don't know if i did so just to make sure i'm gonna use as brush the stored copy and i'm ready to go so now that it's in the brush and that's a big brush so it may take a little while to get it all in memory but now we have transform puppy ray gpu and this render should be a, yep that's a little bit better on the uh lighter on the distortion of the clouds right we don't see them being torn apart that much so um let's see if we can find uh, a nice view and do a final rendering maybe something like this here uh maybe we need to go a little bit down uh let's see so yeah we're still on this guy Maybe a little bit more on that water. Um, what else do we need here? Some uh, riverbed textures. And maybe do the scale a little bit. How about we move it down into the water? All right, so here we go. Uh, what else do I want? A little bit of sky, the sun. Let's move the sun a little bit to the right and farther back. And then increase the intensity of it. Uh, the fog I'm not too happy with. Let's see if we make it darker. Yeah, sort of. Um, we can also... No, we probably need the fog to be a little bit more on the whitish side, or bluish, something like this. And um, let's see, we got some changes in the water reflection. Uh, not super high waves, four is good. Scattering, we want a little bit more, and some caustics. There you go. Maybe this, the water can be a little bit darker. Yeah. 
Uh, finally, better quality rendering. Let's go to high quality. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so let's do a, a final render on that. Um, and of course, it's never final. You can always do better than that, but uh, that's just good enough for this uh, tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, hopefully this will inspire to take your own photographs into some rendering and to make it part of the background. No matter what, ready to let go.